Well, this was unexpected. This genuinely wasn't planned, but an opportunity sort of crashed onto my lap and I just had to. I think what you're all about to witness here is the realisation that I've just committed financial suicide. Welcome everyone to my latest headache. This is my 2003 Range Rover HSE in Giveney Green. What a colour. It's a 2003 pre-facelift model, which means it has the M62 4.4 V8 BMW engine under the bonnet. The interior is in quite a nice grey colour without any of that sort of dated wooden trim looking dash. So on first inspection, you might not be mistaken thinking that this wouldn't look out of place pulling into Buckingham Palace. But that's until I tell you what I paid for it. Two grand. Just before we jump into this video then and start unpacking the details of this nightmare, I must give a really big thank you to Autodoc for sponsoring this video. Autodoc are a huge online car and motorbike parts store and they sell a plethora of components. Their prices actually seem to be really competitive and to be honest, I used them recently to get some OEM specification oil for my 760 Li. I also get the slight feeling that I'm gonna be using them a fair bit for the rangey as well. But genuinely, the delivery was super quick. They operate in over 26 countries, so likely it is they'll operate where you guys are from. And their mobile app is actually really intuitive to use. You simply just put in your registration plate and then all of the available components, parts, and, and actually extras for your car are, are shown. So massive thank you to Autodoc for sponsoring this video. It really is gonna help and be needed as you are about to find out. But anyway, go and check out the link in my description to download the Autodoc app now. So here we are in the Range Rover. I cannot quite believe I'm saying that. Now guys, please do subscribe to the channel if you're one of my 80% of viewers that are not currently subscribed because I mean, this is gonna be interesting and I'll explain to you why right now. So I must, I, I want to make it clear that this, that it genuinely, I, I'm not joking, it wasn't my plan to buy the cheapest Range Rover in the country. I really, I actually really didn't want to do that. So we've actually got a dog on the way, a Red Fox Labrador. He's currently unnamed actually, so I'll put a picture up of him now and you can help me name him. But I've always wanted a Range Rover and so with a dog on the way, I've sort of used that as an excuse to go looking for one. So for the past month or so, I had been looking at the classifieds for said Range Rover. However, the main difference was that I was looking to spend maybe around five to 7,000 pounds for a facelift turbo diesel V8 Range Rover. That's what I was really uh, looking for. However, I was driving along the other day in the seven series going to the shop and just on the forecourt of this garage, two minutes away from my house, was this Range Rover advertised for £2,495. And the rest is history, I suppose. Now, what you're probably all commenting and have been since the start of the video with that very first shot is that the air suspension is collapsed. It is indeed collapsed on the front right side. Unfortunately, that happened yesterday. So I'm filming this video on Saturday I bought the car on Thursday, and yesterday I thought, well, it'd be a great idea to go and take this car out and show my mate my new purchase. As I was showing off the fact that the air suspension actually works on this car, it was in off-road mode. All of a sudden, psh, the front right side just caved. So unfortunately, that happened, which means the car is actually lopsided a little bit now because the rear of the car is currently in normal suspension mode. There's three, well, there's actually four modes on this car. There's off-road mode, there's normal mode, there's access mode, which is the lowest, and there's also a motorway mode, which happens automatically when you're over, I think, 62 miles an hour for 20, 30 seconds or so. However, it's all been deactivated because presumably of the fault with the front right. So what has happened currently and what is the situation is that the rear is in normal mode, the front left is in access mode, and the front right is just collapsed, um, meaning that I, it will actually rub on the arches if I go full lock, it's that low. So it's actually really horrible to drive right now. There's basically no springiness at all. It's rough as anything, and I can't exceed 35 miles per hour. So 
I won't be driving this thing at all actually, apart from this video just round the block to show you. I've booked it into a specialist uh, for Monday, which is two days from now, and we'll take it from there. After filming this video, I actually did a little bit of further digging myself. I had a suspicion that the air suspension compressor located at the rear of the car had stopped working. Now, although I didn't film it at the time, I removed the puzzle shelf, spare wheel, and a few other bits in the back of the car. And then using a 10 millimeter socket and unplugging the compressor from the car, I was able to open it up to see if anything looked untoward, anything had come loose, something like that. However, everything looked fine. But once it was all plugged back in again, there was no noise coming from the compressor itself to indicate it was actually working with all the doors closed and the engine running. So if I had to guess, then I think what's likely to have happened is that I've blown the compressor by overusing it. This means that the compressor will have been overworking just trying to keep the car level. So my guess would be that the car needs a new compressor and then of course that airbag will need replacing but I'll keep you guys updated. And of course to be expected, there's a couple of other minor things with this car. It's losing a bit of coolant. Although because it's sort of a lot of BMW internals on there, I've had a look today and it looks like probably just a rubber hose that's leaking. So hopefully that's not gonna to be too much of an issue. The transmission likes to go into fail safe mode every now and then, which puts the car into limp mode. But up to now at least, it's just been a case of switching the car off and on again and that clears but I will be getting the transmission serviced as well. The car is on 120,000 miles, almost to the, to the zero actually, which isn't all that high for this era of car, but along with my booking on Monday, I'm gonna get the thing fully serviced, get a stamp in the book and get all of the wearables basically replaced. Cosmetically, well, I love the Givenly green paintwork. I really do. It was actually one of my chosen colors when I was looking to spend, you know, good and proper money on one of these. Givenly green was one of my preferences. So. It, you know, although we've had a couple of issues in the two days since I've, I've picked the car up, I feel, still feel like it was meant to happen. Um, and the fact that it was two minutes from home, it was the right color, it was the right engine for this era. I mean, you wouldn't want the three liter diesel. Uh, you'd want the 4.4 V8 petrol from this era. It, it, it just, I had to buy it. And I'm still hoping that it was a good decision. Although, we'll see, won't we? There's a couple of dents and scratches and things like that, which we can refine and make better. But I'm really just, right now, I wanna sort of get this restored to be a really nice mechanical example. And hopefully, if I don't have to spend more than two grand on it, then we'll be in an okay uh, position with this car. It's got an aftermarket head unit, which I really don't like. And you also then lose a lot of the features, such as being able to reset the consumption on my computer here. Well, that was done through the OEM computer and that's gone. So I can't do things like that. So I think I'll probably look to get an OEM head unit back and reinstall that into the car. And yeah, really, I do just want to sort of restore it to a nice specification. And I, I'm, I'm really excited. There's nothing like a Range Rover. Let me tell you, the past few days when the air suspension was working, the way it just rides is, is just so beautiful. And the seating position is like nothing else. I think already I've got the bug and I don't think I'll ever not have a Range Rover if I can afford to be in that position. And let me just show you up to a certain speed anyway. If we put the gearbox into sport, and actually I'll just go into manual so you guys can see. So second gear, listen to the power of this V8. Oh. Honestly, it's so refreshing after having, well, two cars that are very, very noisy. The V8 in this is, as well as being just really smooth and lovely, actually, the responsiveness is really great. Even the five-speed gearbox is, is pretty responsive, better than the, than, the, than the seven series. Just the sound is so subtle, but really, really lovely from this V8. Um, and I, I genuinely couldn't be happier with the car. I'm gutted that obviously we've encountered a few major issues so early on, but like I say, I'm still hopeful at this stage that we're gonna get it resolved. Last thing I mentioned before we pull up as well, this is the HSE spec. So it's not actually a Vogue. I used to think these were all Range Rover Vogues, but the Vogue is a trim level. The HSE, oh my goodness. <laughs> the HSE is a lower, maybe even the lowest of the trim level. So in terms of specification, well, it's missing things like heated steering wheel, it doesn't have, and the rear heated seats, it doesn't have. Speaking of which, and I'll show you in a second, the general condition of this car, apart from the front driver's seat, and you may have noticed a bin bag here covering up the mess that is this door, it's actually, it is, from what I can see from surface level, 
in really good nick. I want to get rid of these, I don't know what they are, but the sort of sticking sun visor things, I want to get rid of those. And also there's a sort of peelable tint on the front left there, which um, is actually, it, it looks terrible. And I want to get rid of that as soon as possible as well. But specification wise, you still have the electronic steering rack. You've still got these great armrests that you just sit. I mean, it is, it's like sitting in a chair at home and just commanding the road. It's, it's great. Electric windows, of course. The air suspension, of course, which obviously is having a few issues of its own at the moment. The most over-engineered cup holder I've ever seen in any vehicle right here. I've got it, but it's over-engineered to hell. And you may have noticed by my sweaty face that the air conditioning is in uh, need of a regas. But for now, anyway, I'm gonna pull it up because I don't really wanna drive it in this condition until it's uh, fixed up. There's a few things I can enjoy though while the car is in a bit of a sorry state, such as I just love the feel of this. It's so solid that I mean, just the, the feel of the whole car basically is so solid, but the most satisfying thing is slamming that and then Oh, it's just so mechanical. It's not all bad either. The back of the car is actually in really good nick, almost to the extent that it's like no one's ever sat in it. Um, I love how you've got this up here, which is your middle seat. But if you pull this down and then open this area here, there's two cup holders. It's just such a, just such a tactile and clever design. And it's just a Range Rover, isn't it? It's just no one can dispute a Range Rover. But yeah, like I say, missing rear heated seats. Some of these trim pieces, you know, they're in very good need of a clean, if not replacement, in fact. But generally speaking, these seats, I mean, these are actually really comfortable in the back and almost like they haven't been sat in. Um, not quite the 7 Series, of course. And I should mention, I haven't sold the 7 Series or the Z4. I've still got both of those cars um, and I'd like them to stay as well as this. Headlining, really, really nice. Good condition, sagging maybe an inch or so but because it's consistent, you can't really notice, but the actual headlining itself is in such good nick. The front headlights and the little wipers here and just the paintwork in general is in pretty good nick. Yes, there's a few nicks here. The rust also on this car is actually, well, I'd say, what would I say, acceptable. The normal places where you get bubbling of rust and quite bad rust, such as the rear tailgate, is free from it. And yes, the arches, are pretty rusty but not as bad as i've seen actually other lower mileage cars i'm basically hoping that i can keep this car It'll be a good little project we can fix it up make it look really nice and essentially prove to you although it's not gone well in the first few days that actually you shouldn't be put off buying a cheap or even just a range rover of this generation um, so that's the plan <laughs> like i said it's not quite gone to plan so far but time will tell won't it I'm actually really still happy with the car. Remember, I only paid £2,000 for it. So even if I've spent a couple of grand on fixing it up and getting it mechanically sound, well, then I'm still in this car for 4K and at 120,000 miles in the condition it's in, I'd still be quite happy. But let's hope anyway, let's hope. So guys, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you like this car, I really do. I'm uh, hoping this will be an interesting series and you guys will want to tune in for it. So thanks so much for watching. Again, thanks to Autodoc for sponsoring this video and I'll see you all very, very soon.